there's a certain thing called swagger. You know, we, we all know what it is when we see it. Someone walks with a swagger. They present themselves with a swagger. There's a, you know, an image they project. The last several months here, Mark, have they taken some of your swagger away, and is that important? <laughs> um, you know, I try to not have a swagger, <laughs> so I'm not, I'm not sure. I don't sure mean it. I don't mean it in a literal but, sense. Um, I mean it more in a in a figurative you know, sense. I mean, there's a lot of there's a lot of crazy stuff that that that's going on, right? So there are periods where people say that you know we're we're doing better than I think we're doing. There are periods where where people say that we're doing worse than I think that we're doing. But one thing that's definitely a thumbs down is Facebook's stock price. It's fallen about 40% since its high profile initial public offering back in May. So at the same time the company is celebrating its one billionth user, it's facing angry stockholders and disappointed employees. On paper at least, Zuckerberg himself has lost billions. But the founder and CEO, who looks even younger than his 28 years, tried to put it all in perspective. But it's been a tough several months around here. What is morale like? Are, are people here worried? Are they concerned? Because a lot of these people came here thinking one thing was going to happen and it's changed. Um, yeah, I mean, you know, things go in cycles. We're obviously in a, we're in a, a, a tough cycle now where, I mean, that doesn't help morale. But at the same time, you know, people here are focused on um, the things that they're building. But like you, these people have taken a hit. Do you, when you walk by and you see faces of employees here, do you feel personally responsible for them? I don't mean as a CEO. I mean, mm -hmm. you look at people here and do, do you feel like, hey, I, I, it's going to be okay. I'm going to make it better. Um, well, I, I, I mean, I feel a, a lot of responsibility in my role. And the thing that, that we can do is just make sure that we're building the business and building our products to be the best that they can be. And that's what everyone comes to work every day to do. And I think, you know, people, people are really excited and optimistic about the things that we're doing. Yet it's also clear Zuckerberg feels the heat. He knows Facebook needs to find important new ways to make big money fast. Can the company make money? I mean, I'm not a tech guy mm -hmm. and I'm not really a business guy. And the question I ask myself and I hear over and over, if a company has a billion customers, uh -huh. how can they not be killing it making money? Well, I think it depends on your definition of killing it. I mean, we are making billions of dollars, right? So, I mean, we're a public company now, so I can, so I can talk about that. But um, the, the future is, um, is, is really going to be about mobile, right, and the opportunities for growth there. So, have I mean, you been slow to get there? Are you playing catch up a little bit in the mobile area? Well, we do have the most used mobile apps. There's five billion people in the world who have phones, so we should be able to serve many more people. An article I read said, is Mark Zuckerberg in over his hoodie? Do you think a CEO who has more experience than you might be able to take this company to the next level and leave you to develop the products? Would that be a possible strategy? I, you know, I take this responsibility that, that I have really seriously, and I, I really think that Facebook needs to be focused on building the best experiences for, for people around the world, right? And we have this philosophy that building the products and services and building the business go hand in hand. When it comes to doing that, few companies do it better than Apple. Zuckerberg is friendly with Apple's CEO, Tim Cook, and was inspired by Apple's late founder, Steve Jobs. What was the thing that you observed about Steve Jobs that makes a difference in your life as a corporate executive every day? I mean, he was just so focused, right? I mean, for him, the, the user experience was, was the main thing that mattered, the only thing that mattered. And um, I, mean, I think that there's a lot that every company can learn from that. Last weekend, Apple sold about 5 million of their new iPhone 5s. Did you buy one? Um, you know, Tim actually sent one to me. It's a wonderful device. You got a freebie? <laughs> <laughs> you didn't even have to pay anything, huh? <laughs> so are you now an iPhone 5 user? Is that the phone you've got in your pocket or back on your desk? Uh, well, I think I handed my phone to someone else before this interview. <laughs> but I mean, I, I, use, I use all of them, right? So I mean, I'm, I'm a big... Are you just not playing favorites here or do you... No, well, well I mean, if you think about it, I mean, I, iPhone is, is a great platform. We actually, there are more people who use Facebook on Android. It's actually, it's a pretty diverse ecosystem and we, we spend our time building for, for all these different things. The place where Facebook does its building is the sprawling former Sun Microsystems complex near San Francisco Bay. From high above, you can see the word hack imprinted on the walkway. And from ground level in the hacker company building, you can see Zuckerberg's glass office. 
The design of the facility is purposely unfinished and employee-centric. There are mini kitchens with 24-7 snacks and restrooms filled with toiletries. And there's a good chance you'll run into the boss. If you're just walking through the campus here, do you think that the employees are comfortable to walk right up to you and say, excuse me, I don't know, what do they call you, Mark? Or do they call you Mark, Mr. Zucker? Mark. Are they comfortable to come up and ask you questions? <laughs> no one calls me Mr. Zuckerberg. <laughs> no. um, yeah, I, uh, a lot of them are. I mean, it's, we, have, we do a lot to create this open culture. The billionaire CEO is now also a husband. The day after the IPO, he married his girlfriend of almost nine years, pediatrician Priscilla Chan. I sent out this email to all of our friends telling them that I was having a surprise party for her for graduating from medical school. You know, it was a really small wedding we had in our backyard. It was 80 or so people, um, but it was, it was really nice. His life at Facebook these days is complicated, filled with meetings and travel. This week, for instance, he visited Russia to meet with the prime minister. Mark Zuckerberg. He even appeared on a late night Russian TV show wearing that same t shirt adorned with small Facebook icons. If you could see my, my closet. You have 12 at, of those t shirts. At home, about, maybe about 20. <laughs> but, um, but literally, it's like my closet is my wife has, has a bunch of stuff, although she has a, her drawer is primarily scrubs for the hospital. And I get one drawer. And my, my drawer is Wait about 20 second. of these. Are you 20 of these great t shirts. Home, you have one, I have drawer one drawer of a wardrobe closet. Yeah, like men it? everywhere. Like men everywhere. No, not this guy. <laughs> <laughs> I've got a slightly bigger closet than that. <laughs> of course, Mark Zuckerberg has bigger issues now than closet space. His goal, he says, is to continue to build the company he founded. Are you even allowed at this stage, Mark, to express any doubt or to show any signs of pressure because so many people are watching you so closely and parsing every word you say so carefully? You know, it's funny. I've noticed that the press and the world's opinion of us really goes in cycles. And I tell people, you know, you, can, you, you have to not believe the good things that people are saying too much or the bad things. Or it doesn't really matter to some extent what the press says. It matters what the people who use our services tell us and what their feedback is. And that's what we're, that's what we're really focused on.